So today I'm going for a swim, not a pleasure swim. I'm going to do a little bit of underwater work on the boat. So boating isn't always just cruising a destination. Sometimes there's a little bit of work that comes along with it. We like to do a lot of the work ourselves so we can be self-sufficient, know the boat that much better. Um, so today I'm going to talk a little bit about underwater boat maintenance. Some of the things that you need to do under the water of the boat is periodically clean uh, the running gear. There can be a tendency for uh, marine growth to accumulate on the running gear, so it's important to keep that clean. Uh, some folks clean the bottom of their boat. The boats do have anti-fouling paint on, which helps uh, prevent things from growing on the boats, but periodically uh, some people may choose to do some additional cleaning as well. However, that can break down your bottom paint and shorten the life of it. So we try not to touch it. We're running toward the end of our life now, so I may give it a little bit of a scrub just knowing that we're going to pull the boat uh, in a few months time to go and have the bottom repainted. But then the other uh, activity that you do underneath the boat is uh, inspect and change the sacrificial anodes. So boats have sacrificial anodes, uh, which look like these. So they come in different sizes depending on uh, where they're installed on the boat. So I'll go over that in a minute. But this is just to give you an idea of what those anodes look like. The reason boats have anodes on them is anytime you have uh, two metals suspended in seawater, it effectively uh, creates a battery. So there's current that runs between those two metals and uh, those electrons are caused by uh, one of the metals uh, releasing bits of itself uh, into the water, releasing ions into the water. That's what's creating that, that current. So these uh, sacrificial anodes are installed on a boat so that all of the other underwater metal components that you have on a boat um, don't, don't decompose essentially. So the important components like your shafts, uh, your struts, your propellers, the things that you want to stay intact are protected by these sacrificial anodes. You use different materials based on uh, where your boating may be. So for example, magnesium is typically used in freshwater applications. Uh, we're in, in a saltwater application. The boat's always in sea, uh, saltwater here in Seattle. So we use uh, zinc. All of our zincs we buy from boatzincs.com. It's a great source to get low prices on zincs and they also have a very large assortment. So we have uh, plate zincs. So this plate zinc, for example, there's three of them installed on our boat. There's one mounted on, on the stern, on the transom of the boat. And then there are two mounted to the undersides of the hull in the aft sections of the hull. We have uh, this large round zinc here that goes on the end of our main propeller shaft. So behind the prop and the prop nut that holds the prop on, there is a zinc on the main prop shaft. We have a collar zinc. Uh, which is installed on the shaft of our wing engine. So this collar splits in half. Uh, you clean the shaft and then you reinstall it. Then our boat uh, has a keel cooler on it. So on either end of the keel cooler are uh, these plate zincs that are installed. The keel cooler is used for cooling the main engine. The way that that works is it's basically like uh, an underwater radiator that's bolted on the underside of the hull. So water, uh, goes through different passages of these these plates of, of steel and coolant is flowing through there and the exchange of the passing seawater is what cools down the coolant and then uh, cools the main engine. It's important that all the passages that the seawater can flow through to cool down those plates uh, is free of marine growth so while I'm down there I like to clean the keel cooler, take a brush and make sure uh, all the openings between the different plates are clear. We also have a, uh, a teardrop zinc, which uh, if memory serves me right, I believe this one is installed on the stabilizer fin. And we also have uh, some zincs that are installed in our bow thruster. So these are, are the zincs for the bow thruster. These zincs break down, so when they become about 50% of their original size, that's typically when you want to change the zinc. Life expectancy varies depending on where it's installed in the boat and how it may be getting affected by that electrolysis process. I dive the boat every quarter and I'm not always changing all of the sinks. Uh, usually it's just a few select sinks. So some may last a full year, some may last six months. So just replace the ones that, that needed at the time that I do the inspection. 
Anytime you remove a zinc, you always want to make sure that the surface that you're reinstalling a zinc on is clean. So a metal brush usually does the trick for that. This is just a stainless steel metal bristle brush. Obviously it's nice to be able to dive the boat ourselves. It reduces the cost a lot. Also by having dive gear on the boat, it's extremely helpful. So if you're in remote locations where you can't hire a diver um, to be self-sufficient is extremely helpful. Here in the Northwest, the water's cold. So I have a full length uh, wetsuit. I believe it's seven mils thick. I have a hood that I wear on my head, gloves to keep my hands warm. But you also wanna make sure that you maintain your dexterity. So having a thin glove um, is kind of helpful. Although a thin glove may not be as warm as the thick glove, so you try to make the work quick. I have boots to keep my feet warm. I have a uh, mask. The neat thing about this mask is there's a mount for a GoPro, so we'll give that a try today. So you guys can get a look at what the bottom of the boat looks like. All suited right, up. I'm all suited up. Just need some help with my zipper. And all right. Underwater we go. Get this rainy underwater party started. We have a, a hookah. So we have a hose that's connected to our compressed air tank. And the nice thing about that is uh, when you're just diving the boat, you don't have to uh, schlep along your, your your air supply tank. So the air supply tank stays on the boat. I have it just uh, bungee strapped to a cleat over here. And then I have, I think it's about 100 feet of hose that connects me to the air supply tank when I'm under the boat doing the work. Camera running? Okay, let me get the camera on. All right, you're rolling. Be safe. Uh, I'm gonna just need my regulator. Oof, a little cold. All right. is they all look great so I don't think we're gonna really change out any of them since oh. we're gonna pull the boat in a couple months for paint now I'm just gonna give them some things to clean up clean up the running gear clean up the keel cooler the stabilizer cooler and just give things a little bit of a look over do I sound weird <laughs> with a mask covering up my nose no, not too bad. <laughs> sound weird to myself sure. <laughs> Here we go. I think I'll change this back one out. So, can you give me that the ratchet with the socket on it? I don't know if that's the right socket, we'll see. One ratchet with a socket coming up. That looks like a ratchet. 
Would it be this thing? Yep. too terrible. That's probably the worst of them all. This one looks quite a bit nicer, I have to say. Not as gross and eaten up. Sacrificed. So. Yeah. So it doesn't really need it. <laughs> what should that look like? You want a to change them when they're like 50% of the way down, so. Like 50% of the thickness? Yeah, like, I, I mean, know. you can see they kind of shrivel down. and they. Well, are you still gonna change it? Ah, it's off. Oh. Yeah, and you stick it in the same plate? Yeah, this one's surrounded to a rubber isolator, but not all of them are. So, I'll return it to the isolator, stick it back on, and put the bolts back in. He's breathing, so that's a good thing. I think I need to get him a little more. Oh, I think we're good there. I know, Sandy. You wish you were going swimming too. Mm. Fun and games, a little bit of work once in a while. Hello YouTube watchers, this is MV Freedom. Thanks for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to see more.